a very good morning to all the respected judges for this online course. Myself, Dr. Arshina H. Sabri, Assistant Professor, School of Computational Sciences from Ra Swami Ramanand Tirtha Marathwada University, Nanded. Today, I am here to present a seminar presentation on the topic e-content development and MOOCs. The content of my seminar is introduction, objectives, e-content module, four quadrant module, MOOCs in the Indian education, how MOOCs are referred to different aspects, how do MOOCs reach to mass, role of SOEM in MOOCs, courses on SOEM, role of open educational resources in MOOCs, what are we paid whenever we develop an e-content for MOOCs? What is the scope of it and what is the first step whenever we go for the e-content development? Firstly, the introduction. The MHRDC under its national mission on educational through ICT has allocated funds for the consortium of the educational communication for development of e-content for nearly 87 undergraduate subjects. It contains the e-content which is of the most highest quality and are the content components of the robust teaching learning system. It is proposed to create a high quality curriculum based interactive content in different subjects across all the disciplines of social sciences, arts, fine arts and humanities, na natural and mathematical sciences and linguistic and languages. The e-content developed are so developed that would be available on the open access through a dedicated learning management system. The main objectives of the e-content development is to develop a e-teaching material in a creative way without IT expertise. Secondly, it also enables us the exploration of more suitable presentation in the content of e-learning content creation through the models, practical examples and the checklist. It also helps us to develop the e-content using the contemporary ICT to maintain the uniformity and follow appropriate standards for the interoperability. The module e-content module are comprises of basically the following elements and the things which should be included into it are firstly the objective, secondly the subject mapping, then comes the summary of that subject. Then what are the textual matters to be included contains the case studies related to the subject and the frequently asked questions. The whole e-content for the subject should include the video as well as its audio. Next comes the evaluation part which comprises of the assignments which includes uh, assignments in the form of the quizzes and tutorials. Then come the references, which contains the glossary and the links. Lastly is the downloads and the contact list for that particular course. Next comes what are the subject matter expert things should be provided in the context in the form of four quadrant model. The first quadrant should have the e-text which comprises that the content writer is expected to write the detailed write-up on the topic of the model as per the content structure. The structural description should be enriched with the multimedia supplements wherever applicable and the different multimedia supplements which are expected to be included comprises of the images animations, graphics, video and audio clips, line drawing, hand drawing, whichever applicable for the course, 
For each topic or subtopic, content writing should use the examples to explain the module if required. The next quadrant, which is the second quadrant, is dedicated to the self-learning, where the content writer is expected to provide the video tutorial which all explains the topic of the model. The tutorial may also include the multimedia, animation, documentaries, simulation, virtual labs, etc. The third quadrant, which is dedicated for the learn more, sources for the future reading web resources, this quadrant contains the supplementary material of the topic of the module in different forms like other related reading materials, sources for the future reading such as book articles etc and the link to the website dealing with the topics. Lastly comes the four quadrant which is dedicated for the self-assessment and evaluation which contains the a writer should include minimum 10 to 15 questions for each module in the form of the multiple choice questions with answers or true and false statements. Then we'll see what are the role of MOOCs in the Indian education, where we'll see the introduction as well as the roadmap for the MOOC which in the Indian education has been played. The MOOC refers to the innovation approach to impart the education overcoming the time, age and the other relevant constraint. It's available for the mass and it is open for all, for any age uh, persons, for any uh, uh, discipline persons. So you can say that MOOCs is having the interdisciplinary courses also. It includes both the credit or non-credit courses. It may and may not be associated with any university or institution. It is not only for the students but also for the teachers and non-academicians also. MOOCs have a longer history than actually we know in our real time. How do MOOCs reach to mass? It reaches to mass through different online platforms. Some of the platforms are free with certain limitations such as Moodle. Platforms are Moodle, EDX, Coursera, Khan Academy, FutureLearn, Canvas, Swam, etc. Platform to prefer as a beginning means what are the most preferred uh, platforms are the Moodle, which also stands for the Modular Object Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment. Platform being provided by the HRD India are the Swam which also stands for the study webs of active learning for young asper, aspiring man, minds. A role of SWAM in MOOCs, it is only platform recognized by the Ministry of the Human Resource Development of India. It only facilitates to the course coordinators who are from the institution recognized under the section 12B in the UGC norms. So indirectly you can say, that these are the institutions which are being affiliated to some universities. Courses on SOEM can only be provided after the concerned institutions and further expert panel are have been proved, approved by it. It also asks for the PG experience. Nowadays, they are asking for the PhD expertise also. And the PG experience of at least five years in the concerned discipline to be a subject expert. Courses vary in duration from the four weeks to six months also. Courses on SOEMS are for both the students and the teachers. The university who uploads the course is the host university. Parent university is the one who adopts the course. Next is the only those courses which are adopted by any university are treated as credit courses. Credit courses for students provide the credit points on passing the concerned courses. There is no academic recognition to the non-credit courses. And the six months courses such as the ARPIT for teachers which are being considered as equivalent for the, their certification courses or 
any of one refresher course also. Then comes the, what are the roles of the Open Educational Resources in MOOCs, which also stands for OER. OER contains the five R's, which stands for Reuse, Revise, Remix, Redistribute and Retain. OER, which is nothing but the Open Educational Resources, is a license to use someone's content without his or her prior permission. It is different from giving the refer uh, references and neither requires it. Some of the OERs are OER Africa, OER Asia, MIT Open Courseware, OER Commons. Online videos and e-content used at SOEM platforms should be plagiarism free and collected from the OER only. So this is the basic uh, requirement that all the contents which are being posted in the forms of open course in the MOOCs should be plagiarism free. Then what is the credit or how the developer are being paid whenever they are developing the e-content? So what are you paid with? What are you paid as a course coordinator? So rupees 1 lakh if there is enrollment of more than 500 students in your course and first cycle of the course has been completed. Secondly, do other associates are paid as well? Yes, as per the SWAM guidelines. What are you paid as an institution? So a total fund of rupees 13 lakhs 50,000 rupees is given in installments as the course development progresses. This fund is purely subjected to the course development only. What is the scope of this e-content development? SWAM is running 400 courses as present. HRD Ministry has a distant view of running online program. There is a requirement of 10,000 courses on SWAM to run such programs. SWAM is seeking for those 9,600 courses from the faculties across the country. What can be the first step whenever you are just thinking of trying to make the e-content for the MOOCs? So firstly, you can join one of the ARPIC course in SWAM and just get a experience how the courses are being developed by the expertise. Develop a model course on Moodle. Take a bunch of 50 students to practice the online teaching methods. Use some of the flipped and the blended classroom practices in your teaching and make a well use of the software available for teaching and assessment. So whenever you are thinking of developing a course for the uh, different uh, platforms of uh, online teaching, so firstly you can uh, see for the expertise where actually you are expert in and develop a e-content in the form of a video which should be fully uh, a, uh, a mix of uh, the animations, the PPTs and the uh, what you can say the visual um, appearance of yours. So the better the uh, expressiveness of the e-content, the more the uh, views are being given for the e-content to your courses. Lastly, we can say that obviously for in the development of the e-courses we are late. But it is always being suggested that when you are starting, that is the beginning of the things. So we can say that we are late, but we can be the latest. Thank you.